paper presents 4th August as Ghana's Day of Destiny indeed. It was a day the political future of Ghana was mapped out. The ideals of the day have suffered untold hardships, but the fire has always been reignited, and by God's grace, we can borrow Lincoln's words and say that the glowing torch of liberty, which was lit that day, shall never be quenched. It shall never perish. This presentation attempts a best eye view of the seed that was sown on 4 August 1947 and the Dangwa Dumbo Busia tradition which sprang therefrom. Today presents an opportunity to ask where, who are we? What are our roots? Where do we come from? What was the tradition's contribution to the founding of the Ghanaian state? What principles underpin the tradition? What political parties have represented the tradition? And how have they interacted with other political parties in our history? How have we been formed in government? And what are our conditions to democracy? good governance, human rights, the rule of law, the socio-economic development of Ghana, and finally, what is or should be ahead of us. At the time this great event took place, I was a three-year-old boy in Asamankasi. I've had a privilege of meeting men like Dankwa, Busia, and others in my father's home whenever they toured on UGCC, GCP, LLM, UP matters. And I have great respect for them. We know that the entire history of the nationalist struggle can be grouped in terms of the proto-nationalist movement and the full-scale movement of the post-1945 World War II years. After the Second World War, the leaders of the time 
the educated at the time, who knew the fullness of the born of 1844, decided it was time to move from reforms to full-scale independence. It's worthy of note that 4th August 1947, and for that matter, August 4th was the date on which the Bond of 1844 was signed. And on the occasion that we are celebrating today, the Founding Fathers decided, and it came to pass, that any time the Gokos was to be independent, the date should be 6th of March. As a, a significant follow-up to the bond of 1844, signed on 6th March. On 4th August 1947, those men of quality and excellence and other members of civil society who met finally to give the quest for independence its logical conclusion included the following. George Alfred Bagrant, Dr. J.B. Dankwa, Edward Ekufu Ado, William Ufuri Atta, Emmanuel Obechebi Lamte, R. S. Blay, F. A. Awuno Williams, Dr. Degraft Johnson, John Sibu, and Kwamina Kesi. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the picture behind me show these great men of valor. Incidentally, the reason why Kwame Nkrumah, later to become part of the Big Six, is not present there is that at that time, he was in the United Kingdom. Those who met to fashion out independence for the Gold Coast, did not at that time include Kwame Nkrumah, though he was to come later and add significantly to the struggle. It is for this matter that it must be understood clearly when we are looking into our history, and it is imperative to echo loudly that Nkrumah was not the founder of Ghana. I consider him one of the founding fathers, something similar to Paul, who was not there when Christ gave the Last Supper. The man that Christians generally say in Chi, Paul Awamantem, or Saint Edikamfu. Nevertheless, you cannot say Paul, notwithstanding his great achievement, I mean, apart from Christ himself, was the founder of Christianity because Peter, James, and John, he came to meet them. And they were pursuing a course. He came to assist, but to say that he came and made it is simply not the truth. The progenitors of the MPP founded Ghana. And Nkrumah, who had been invited by these unsung heroes became one of the founding fathers by courtesy of that invitation. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, one of the things we've done very wrong in this country is to turn everything into sheer political. To the extent that, whilst the journalists say, 
Facts are secret and comment is free. We think we can make facts free and comment scandalous. We cannot be, build a nation on half-truths and propaganda. This issue we discuss in full on this occasion and in other parts of the paper. August 4 was indeed Ghana's day of destiny. It is the day that should be established in letters of gold and celebrated with pride by all Ghanaians. Professionals, business people, workers, opinion leaders, chiefs, and all men and women of goodwill, inspired by love for country, met in Sorbonne to work for self-government and freedom from colonization. I have great regard for Dr. Nkrumah as a great Ghanaian, but the truth must be told. A recap of the chronology of events shows that before the arrival of Nkrumah, some gallant Ghanaians were taking steps to lead Ghana to independence. That is truism. Nkrumah left for the, from, for the U.S. in 1935. He studied and worked in the U.S. and England. He returned to Ghana in December 1947 on the invitation of the UGCC leaders who paid Nkrumah's fare, expenses, etc. He was the only person on salary in the UGCC. If something had not been founded or established, it is useful to ask what was Nkrumah brought down to do? Of course, he did not come to, like we say in the tree or Ga also, come and cut stones. He came to help in achieving an independence which others had conceptualized and began to work upon. The cry for independence was at full blast after the 1948 rouse. On 28 February 1948, when the ex men marched to the castle and the shooting took place. Who was the person? Well, who were the people? And what movement was the one behind the soldiers? The cry for independence had been resonating from 1945 to 1948. What magic could one person have done from December when he arrived in Ghana to February 1948, when the agitation reached its apogee, if there was nothing worthwhile on the ground? Some people have regrettably asked, how can we have more than one founder? To such compatriots, I humbly lend them this advice. Foundership need not be perceived in monoistic terms. Every year, Achimotans celebrate the founding fathers, Agri Fraser Gadisberg. In Asante, we have Kosejutu and Konfuanochi. In the USA, Washington is not the founder. They have founding fathers. I reminded President Mills of blessed memory of this when he, his, he established the founding father, father day in Ghana. And you need not be a founder for your greatness to be recognized by your country. Martin Luther King, among several others, have birthday holidays to their memory. We must not confuse these things. I will advise that in future, if we want our nation to be blessed by giving honor to whoever deserves, then we should have the day that we celebrate Nkrumah as a holiday for Nkrumah. He was, after all, the first president. And he did a lot for the country in many ways, resounding the African pride, several projects, 
that had stand to his memory, his quest for education, the Temamoto way, and other achievements which are well documented, documented in this presentation, stand to his credit and his acknowledgement. Nevertheless, honor must be given to a deserving, these deserving men who are the founding fathers of Ghana. Listen with ladies and gentlemen. Dankwa made the declaration of self-emancipation soon after the 48 rounds. It was the sound that propelled independence, very similar to the American Declaration of Independence. He said, among others, we have come from all corners of this country to decide how we are going to be governed. A goal coast of liberty. We left our homes in Ghana, and very soon it will be quite clear, setting fundamentals of independence had been declared in Sorbonne in 1947 before Nkrumah arrived in this country. What would be the name of the independent country to be? That name was researched upon and produced by J.B. Dagwa. They knew we would need a flag. Naturally. What would be the flag? Red, yellow, green which we have to say. They had conceptualized, formulated, and put all these things down for posterity. What will be the emblem of the nation? They chose the eagle. And Dankwa justified and explained in the stencil the eagle for Ghanaians. It should interest the Ghanaians to know that these things had been established, written in the various newspapers, and no one person could have changed it at that stage of our development towards independence. But when Nkrumah had his way as a president in 1964, when there was a referendum for the one-party state, he got the flag he wanted. And there are many people who don't know that our flag of red, yellow, green was in 1964 changed to become red, white, and green. All our embassies all over the world changed our flags in our embassies to red, white, and green. It was only after 1966 that we went back to the dream of the founding fathers. I trust that these will make us understand some of the controversies of the time, that they were fundamental because some people saw a monolithic interpretation of statesmanship, which was an anathema to the founding fathers who met in Sorbonne. Ghana should be free. And apart from these emblems that were chosen, including the eagle, a constitution was also written. And at this time, may I jump a bit and say, that that constitution was the opposite of the constitution that ruled Ghana until 1966. And that constitution of 1969 was a sankofa of the constitution that the founding fathers agreed upon on this historic day, 60. 70 years ago. A, a few things in that regard will be said. But the Kufuado simply went, I think, under his bed and brought out the constitution that was not to be, dusted it, and that became the essence of the 1969 constitution, which was the father of the 1979 constitution and also gave birth 
to the 1992 Constitution, a real charter of liberty. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Ghanaians must give themselves more pride than we often do. Independence did not just come. My former student, Paul Odomochi, will tell you, I used to say, Kuku money was very fundamental in our becoming independent at that time. Because with our gold, diamond, boxer, manganese, cocoa, timber, as Scott Reeves was to write, Ghana had become the richest people in the whole of Africa, south of the Sahara, apart from white South Africa by the time we became independent. And our educational level was the highest also. In fact, by dint of the cocoa farmer, when we were producing more than half of the world's cocoa, we had become fit for independence because we have what it took to become independent. People like these, whose forebears had found the, had founded the Aborigines Right Society at a time when the British were taking the lands of nationals all over Africa, and who could go to Britain, led by Mensa Saba, hire an English lawyer to work under Mensa Saba and present their case and win their case, are not mere people. And we must therefore fly like eagles, as Dangwa and those who met on this great day, and respect ourselves and fly like eagles right way there. <laughs> After the 1948 trials, Dankwa charged to the British in one of the, in fact, maybe the longest telegram ever seen, that eagle fly for you are not a chicken. That was soon after the 1948 trials. He knew where the eagle should go. Like I said, our name had been chosen. Our colors had been chosen. Our constitution had been written by the legal team led by Ekufuado. We wasted unnecessary time majoring on minors at a time when we should have been moving ahead. This is ladies and gentlemen. In the course of this lecture, we will see that some people had established a clear course as our national pathway. And that we will see that when Dankwa was a legislator, he moved the way MPP legislators must move. We shall see that when Busia had the chance, he showed qualitative governance. When this was rudely interrupted, when Kufu had the chance, he conceptualized and reproduced the excellence expected of MPP politicians who are the offspring of the day we are talking about. It is our vision and our hope and trust that another chance, we having gone through the wilderness a while, perhaps only to be, to be toughened by the Lord, a Kufuado, will continue with the spirit of this day and discharge his expectations in the way President Kofo did and the bystanders of the tradition. <laughs> I 
I will speak to the paper because of the time allocated to me. But I trust it will be duly published in due course and as soon as possible because these things are important for our national life. It is important for us, and this is captured in the paper, what we stand for and what we should stand for. Today, the events of the day in question have been translated in what we call the Dangwa Dumbu Busia tradition. We are against authoritarianism. We are against over-centralism. In fact, today when the whole world is talking about centralization, it had been captured by Dangwa and Go in 1947. Because decentralization is also devolution of power. It ensures participation and means all roles will not lead to one role. This is the framework seen and visualized by our leader, our forebears. It has often been said that this rich tradition was against independence. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let us ensure that we obliterate these propaganda lies from our history. They say that these men of valor and quality and excellence were nation wreckers, that they were bomb throwers who compelled the kind hearted Nkrumah to detain them in the national interest. Our founding fathers were liberal minded and peaceful people. So liberal minded that President Kufu, when he had the criminal libel law, which he could have applied to strengthen a stranglehold over Ghana, decided with the help of a Kufuado to repeal that law. <laughs> this is a Dangwa Busia Dumbo principled stance. And distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I will say that for the future, let us not be tempted to adopt other people's way. There's only one way, the right way. And I trust that the good people of Ghana, when they've done a few circuitous moves, will nevertheless inevitably Provided we are going by the true standards of the vision of uh, Dangwa and Ho, they will come back to us. With regard to some of these accusations, you see, you cannot appreciate them fully without some of the ideological issues of the time. Nobody in, provoked Nkrumah in, in to pass the PDA. This man, and a great man in many ways, had written in his autobiography, and I quote, emergency measures of a totalitarian kind are required in the building of new states. That was before he actually came to power. And of course, this was not anything new. It was the, prince, the stand of communists of the time. And this is what happened in all the socialist communist countries that we all know of. You must arrest everybody who was your opponent. You must have a one party state. And in fact, Nkrumah was later to refer to the CPP as the mighty oak tree from which Everything else is a branch and from which everything else must flow in order to obtain legality, legitimacy. So if a man has such 
an ideological framework with those of us who lived in the communist times know very well. You should not be surprised if we have PDA and other things. They must, and these manifested themselves, of course. And when, of course, Nkrumah had finished uh, with, his, oh, with his opponents, men like Komla Agbeli Benema, his right hand man, and others also ran into exile only to come back after the 1966 coup. If a man did not think fundamental human rights should be part of a constitution, and others think that that is the quintessence of governance, do you think the two can work together? And if we could not work together, is it because we did not want independence? It is because in, the, in coming to independence, and we are going to rule ourselves, we should take stock and decide how we are going. In the Ghana terms, we ask ourselves, Jay will be to me, the way I'll attend. Yeah, connoisseur. Yeah, connoisseur is very important in all our tribes. And if you don't agree how you are going to go, the elders will not allow the people to march because we've got to agree before we move. No wonder there was so much disagreement. It was ideological. It was on principle. It was on issues. It, it was not a bomb throwing or nation wrecking matter at all. As you will see in more detail when we come to read the paper um, as a whole. And all those references to coups, of course, are not true as to uh, and the, the Dankwa Bosnia tradition coming to do anything that was improper. In fact, when Nkrumah arrested some people after the Kulungugu bomb attempt, ask yourselves, which people did himself try? His foreign minister, he said, was responsible. His secretary general of the party was also tried. And his powerful minister for information was one of the people who were, who, who were tried. No prominent UP man was part of those who himself tried for the attempt of his life. Why do some people continue to propagandize this issue? We must put the truth right. Otherwise, our children will be taught wrongly in our schools. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, our forebears showed that they respect the rule of law, even in most difficult circumstances. After 1992 elections, this tradition went back to its roots and said, we will not let people go in the streets. We will fight another way. And we wrote a stolen verdict. Today, it has, it has changed the electoral terrain in Ghana. It brought light. And after that, things changed. Another time, when our president lost a case in the Supreme Court over the contest that reached on the elections. And today I'll share this with you. When Nana Arudankwa Ekufuado, then not the president, was going to the court that morning, one of the most heavy hearted days in my life, because we could send difficulty. He had two speeches. One here if I lost, one here if I win. <laughs> Please clap for him. Yeah. 
is such a man warlike? If I win, I will rejoice and thank God, my God. If I lose, I will accept and let the state move on. That is the spirit. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, some of these things are rather painful, but they exemplify a tradition of people who know and appreciate public life and service to country. I will pray that as we link this great day to the years to come, by the grace of God in the history of this republic, we will stand by principle rather than expediency and rather than greed in rendering that which is well known in other countries as public service. You need vision to be a leader in public service. Dr. Dangwa, question time. Will government consider the appointment of a national committee to inquire into the possibilities of a water basin corporation, now VRA? Will government set up a committee to go into this? To develop the resources of the river for light, water, and power, and to exploit for public benefit the vast mineral resources of the Volta Basin. The colonial secretary replied, Dangwa, in the present circumstances, no, sir, that it won't happen. Dangwa retorted and went on and went on. Nkrumah did very well to have done what Dangwa envisaged, conceptualized at that time. But is it just? Is it just to say he did nothing? These are the fundamental issues that this country must deal with. And distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I have said elsewhere, and I mean it, that if you will not speak the truth as a people, it will not be a blessing, but a curse unto you. Because when a person sacrifices his life for a good cause, and you deride him, it cannot be a blessing unto you. Dankwa is the father of the University of Ghana. Dankwa was passionate about education. He shared with his UGCC leaders all the time. Every Ghanaian should be given opportunity to attain the highest possible educational level. When the colonial administration outdoored a plan to build one university to cater for the whole of West Africa at Ibadan, Nigeria, Dankwa was vehemently opposed to the idea. Having had the counsel of his other UGCC colleagues who were not members of the assembly. He spoke against it on platforms. He wrote untiredly in the newspapers. And at the legislature, he was most vocal. He said, among other things, the Gold Coast is not Nigeria and never could be. Achimota is not Yaba or Ibadan and never could be. Sir, there are nations in Africa as there are nations in Europe. There are peoples among black Africans 
as well as there are peoples among Europeans. You cannot expect to build a successful university in, in Andalusia, in Spain, with its Muslim foundations for the education of the people of Oxfordshire in England, with its feudal background. For the English are not Spanish, nor the Spanish English. So it must be everywhere, among every people, whether in West Africa or in Western Europe. And he went on and on and agitated. And the British resiled and decided to build the University College of the Gold Coast in Ligon, which became the University College of Ghana and the University of Ghana. It pains me any time when our opponents, the Indies, give the impression that we have something against others. We move on looking onto the fundamentals that we believe in. And we will not depart anyway because of the deviations other people have or intend for us. But if the CPP, who are our brother parties, and if I, who are our children, because they came out of the bowels of the tradition anyway, and who are always welcome anyway, once they decide to proceed with the tenets of the tradition, it is important for us to note that when we were going to have election 1992, the NDC, who have no tradition, decided to poach. They had to poach the place they could not meditate was the children of 4th August, 1907. This is true. I've detailed this in my book, Politics in Ghana, up to 1992, that is 82 to 92. And it was the leadership of the party echoed loudly by Boatin, Kweku Boatin, that the CPP had been penetrated by the newly created NDC and these men, the names of which he supplied and which I quoted extensively. And that they had created the confusion within the party, which was then broken and fragmented into six political parties. And I wrote, if the CPP wants to survive, they should not look our way because we are not out to destroy them. They must proceed to extricate themselves from the bowels of the NDC, then they will survive. <laughs> Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, some men of valor sowed a great seed. Ours today is to follow the trajectories, the principles, keep on watering that which is good, Keep on uprooting and throwing out that which is not good and develop this nation. Thank you. Okay. Shall we please observe? President of the Republic and his entourage, he passed first.